Hello, price elasticity of supply. Price elasticity of supply, PES, measures the responsiveness of supply to a change in price. So when a good change is in price, how much can the suppliers react? If we know that supply curves slope upwards, which indicates that at higher prices, suppliers want to supply more, but when price rises, how much more will they, will they supply? How much can they react? Uh, if the supply curve is very, very steep, and you can see that as price goes up from P1 to Q1, uh, from P1 sorry, to P2, quantity supplied only rises by a smaller proportion. This would probably indicate inelastic supply. You see the suppliers are not able to react greatly when the price went up. They can't increase their supply by very much. On the other hand, a supply curve which is more shallow, would show that supply is far more responsive. When price P1, quantity Q1, rises to P2, the quantity massively increases, supply is much more reactive or responsive to the price rise, and this would indicate elastic supply. Well, actually the rule is this, if the supply curve passes through the price axis, let me just tidy this up a little bit, if the supply curve passes through the price axis, it will be elastic supply. If it passes through the origin, it will be unitary elasticity and the supply will react in exactly the same proportion as the uh, price change. And if it passes through the quantity axis, it will be inelastic supply. Now there are two extremes, there is the perfectly elastic supply curve, which is horizontal, and there is a perfectly inelastic supply curve, which is vertical, meaning the price changes, supply remains at Q, there is no reaction. Um, but you should also know, of course, the equations, the equations for calculating the value of price elasticity of supply. And there are two equations that you must learn. Price elasticity of supply is P over Q, quantity supplied, times change in Q over change in P. Alternatively, if you don't have actual quantities to deal with, or actual prices, but only percent changes in price and quantity supplied, you're going to have to use this equation, where percent change in quantity supplied divided by percent change in price. So this equation, or this equation, will lead you to an actual value for price elasticity of supply. The values that you get will always be positive. I'm going to rub this out now because I want to put some values up. The values you get will always be positive for price elasticity of supply because when there's a rise in price, there's a rise in quantity. When there's a fall in price, there's a fall in quantity supplied. So because the change in quantity is always going in the same direction as the change in price, we always get a positive value on PES. If the value is between 0 and 1, we say there is inelastic supply. If the value is 1, we say unitary elasticity. And if it's over 1, if it's above 1, we say elastic supply. What goods are likely to have inelastic supply? Typically, agricultural goods and com um, commodities that have to be dug out of the ground. Uh, metals or um, oil will probably have inelastic supply because it's not easy for the extractors of metals or the extractors of oil to, to react when there is a price change. They can't quickly increase their supply. They may have some spare capacity. They may be able to pump out a bit quicker the oil but uh, it's not easy for them to speed up or slow down the extraction speed of the, of the commodity that they extract. Likewise with agricultural goods, when the price of, let's say, fresh peaches rises, it's not easy for farmers who grow peaches to quickly, quickly have fresh peaches, extra fresh pieces, uh, peaches available. You know, they have to plant new trees. It takes years, maybe, for the trees to grow before they start being able to increase the quantity uh, that they produce. So, um, the agricultural goods and certain commodities tend to have very inelastic supply. Elastic supply is more likely to exist when suppliers at relatively low cost 
are able to store um, a quantity of their product that doesn't deteriorate over time. And so if price goes up, they can quickly release extra supply onto the market. I don't know, perhaps a supply of t-shirts or something like that could be quite elastic because t-shirt manufacturers may have a store of t-shirts ready for when the price rises. They can quickly increase their supply. But manufactured products that are relatively quick and easy to produce tend to have more elastic supply. Right, let me be a bit more specific about what a PES reading actually means. Imagine that uh, we learn that the PES for, let's say, uh, fresh apples is 0 0.2 and that the PES for t-shirts t -shirts is 4. What does this actually mean? Well, literally what this means is that every time price changes by 1%, there will be a 0.2% change in the quantity supplied. So if price goes up by 1%, quantity supplied would rise by 0.2%. For t-shirts, a PES of 4, elastic supply, would imply that when the price of t-shirts changes by 1%, every time it changes by 1%, the supply will change by 4%. It's much more responsive than the price change. So if the price of t-shirts fell by 10%, we might see a 40% fall in the quantity supplied of t-shirts. Okay? Well, I hope that uh, cleared up price elasticity of supply. Thank you for watching the video. Bye-bye.